guys, welcome back to Chemistry 1032 instructional videos. I am your professor, Dr. Russell Betts, and we'll be talking today about modes of bonding. Chapter 3.4, In Search of the Octet. Part 2, Covalent Bond Formation. Now, nonmetals will combine and share valence electrons to achieve the coveted octet. They will share electrons and they will form what is called a covalent bond. Covalent bond. Okay, now in the covalent bond, each atom in the bond has the electrons. They both are counting them as part of their octet. So they both have a bond. They both have an octet. When atoms share their uh, electrons, they result in a covalent compound. So nonmetals form covalent compounds. Now the smallest or fundamental unit of a covalent compound is called a molecule. Some definitions for you to know. Now the number of covalent bonds that an atom will form equals the number of electrons necessary to complete an octet. Pretty simple, right? So if we had carbon, carbon will form four bonds because it needs four electrons to complete its octet. Nitrogen. Nitrogen will form three bonds because it needs three electrons to complete its octet. Oxygen. Two bonds to complete the octet. Um, and uh, fluorine. Fluorine needs one bond to complete the octet. Okay? And that's how it works. So they all, all these atoms want to form bonds to complete their octet. So look for single electrons. Remember single electrons? Look for those. And that's how many bonds an, an atom wants to make, or a nonmetal wants to make, to complete the octet. All right? Pretty neat, huh? Pretty neat. I think that's pretty cool. Now, to complete its octet through a covalent bond, an atom must share its unpaired or the single electron with another atom that has a single electron. Okay? Very simple example of this is hydrogen. There's one hydrogen atom with one valence electron. Here's another hydrogen atom with another valence electron. The red hydrogen and the purple hydrogen will collide somewhere out there in space, and you'll get this. Now, if you were to cover up the red hydrogen with your finger, you would see the purple hydrogen has two electrons. That's a duet. Hydrogen wants a duet, right? If you cover up the purple hydrogen, you will see the red hydrogen has a duet. So at any given time, each atom in the bond has a complete filled valence shell. In hydrogen's case, it's the duet rule. Every other atom, it's the octet rule. Okay? Now... That shared pair of electrons is called bond pairing. When they share them, it's called bond pairing. It's just a term. Or simply a bond. Okay? So now they'll make a, a bond which looks like this. H line H. I shouldn't draw the H bigger. Sorry about that. Let me draw a little neater. There you go. That is a single bond. And that counts for two electrons. So single bond counts for two electrons. Okay? Now let's take a look at this chlorine example down here. So we have one chlorine slams into another chlorine. They will share or mingle their single electrons and do some uh, bonding pair. Okay? And then we just draw it as a line between two atoms and that line represents two electrons. Okay. Now, cover up the chlorine on the left. Let's just let me just obliterate it. There, don't even look at it. Two, four. So there's two here. There's two here, and two here plus the bond. The bond always counts for two. That's four bonds or three bonds. Sorry, one bond and three lone pairs. That's eight valence electrons. Let's back out of here. Now, obliterate the other chlorine. Now, you wouldn't obliterate it on the video. I have no other choice. Look at this chlorine. Count the bond as two, four, six, eight. 
that chlorine has eight valence electrons. Okay? And that's how it works. So every at any given moment, each chlorine in the bond has a has the octet rule satisfied. Pretty neat, huh? Now, sometimes you'll have to do more than one bond. Sometimes you'll have to do multiple bonds. For example, oxygen has six valence electrons. Say it's bonding up to another oxygen that has six valence electrons. If these two electrons were to mingle, you would have something that looks like this. There we go. Now, if I covered up the blue oxygen, do that with your finger, just cover up the blue oxygen. Remember, the bond between them counts for two. Two, whoops, I totally messed it up, guys. I'm so sorry. Let's do that again. Uh, okay, well, <laughs> it's not my day, guys, not my day. All right, one more time. Here we go. So we have oxygen. Here we go. And this is where we kind of ended off. So cover up the blue oxygen, count the purple one. The lone pairs each count for two, and the bond counts for two. So that's six, plus this single electron right here, that's seven. So the purple oxygen only has seven. So that's not enough, the octet rule is not satisfied. So what we do is we say, okay, these two single electrons right here will also mingle. And that'll give us this. Now, if you would, cover up the uh, blue, uh, blue atom, the blue oxygen, and you'll see here these two electrons count for two. Those two electrons count for two, so there's four so far. This bond counts for two, there's six. That bond counts for two, that's eight. Cover up the purple one, you'll see the lone pair, the lone pair, there's two, there's uh, six, and there's eight. So remember, double bonds are four electrons. Double bonds are four electrons. And carbon can do this as well. Carbon likes to make double bonds. Example here. Carbon likes to make triple bonds. Here's an example where carbon triple bonds to nitrogen. Oops. Can do a little better than that, sorry. There we go. There's hydrogen cyanide. If you were to cover up the carbon, you would see that the nitrogen, lone pair here for two, four, six, eight. Triple bond counts for th uh, six E negative. Okay. Now a great example of a great example of a molecule, a simple molecule that has a triple bond is nitrogen. There we go. Nitrogen looks like this. I'll just draw it for you because I think you're getting the hang of it now. There you go. Nitrogen has two, four, six, eight valence electrons. So nitrogen has an octet, but between them, between these two nitrogens, is a triple bond. Triple bond counts for six. So cover up the purple nitrogen. Triple bond is six, and the lone pair is eight. Triple bond is six, the lone pair is eight. Okay? Lone pair, two, triple bond, six. Six and two is eight. Everybody has eight. Everybody's happy. So atoms don't have to have single bonds. They can have a single, double, or triple, but they've got to satisfy the octet rule, unless you're, of course, hydrogen, or, and you'll satisfy the duet rule. Now, formulas and structures of covalent compounds. Methane, with a formula C4, CHH4, CH4, excuse me, goodness, is a covalent compound of all nonmetals. Carbon makes four bonds. Hydrogen makes one bond. So let's just take a look at this. Carbon, lone, uh, single electron, single electron, single electron. Hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. Here are my four. This is the, are the, these are the atoms that make up methane. 
So now, we know that hydrogen wants to make one bond. We know that carbon wants to make four bonds. It's kind of nice that we have four hydrogens and four single electrons and an atom that wants to make four more bonds. That makes it kind of easy. Watch this. Hydrogen here. Now, let's count. Two, three, four, five. So carbon has five valence electrons right now. Hydrogen has two. So this hydrogen right here is finished. Not going to have any more electrons. Doesn't want any more, won't take any more. So this is wrong. Never going to happen. Okay? So don't even draw it. What does happen is this. Another hydrogen will go here. Two, four, five, six. So every time we make a covalent bond to carbon, carbon gets one more valence electron on its way to the octet. There we go. Two, four, six, eight. At this point, carbon has an octet. Let me just make that a little bit cleaner, guys. There we go. There you go. Carbon has an octet. Pretty neat, huh? And these are called Lewis structures. Whenever you see a structure kind of like this, like that one right there, those are called Lewis structures. And that's kind of how, well, not kind of, that is how chemists um, illustrate molecules. We draw them like this because it tells us a lot about the structure and it's how we communicate with each other but what's going on inside chemical reactions. And actually, once you get the hang of looking at Lewis structures, it kind of tells you a whole bunch of stuff. Now, we've already done a few of these examples. We'll do them again. Fluorine. There we go. And another fluorine. We'll make a covalent bond by mingling these electrons. Single bond. Now, Two, four, six, and the bond makes eight. Two, four, six, and the bond makes eight. So there's the Lewis structure of fluorine, and the, and the molecular formula for fluorine is F2. Pretty simple, right? Pretty straightforward, I hope. Let's do uh, oxygen again, really quick. We've already seen it, so it's kind of a review. Single electron, single electron. Let's just take another color here. Okay, oxygen's got six. They want to have eight. So let's just mingle these two electrons. Two, four, six, seven. Two, four, six, and seven. So each oxygen needs one more bond. What's going to happen is these two electrons will mingle, causing a second bond to form. There we go. Two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight. One more time. Two, four, six, eight. This oxygen has an octet. Two, four, six, eight. That oxygen has an octet. So everybody has an octet. And the molecular formula for O2, or oxygen, excuse me, is O2. This is why oxygen exists as a dimer, because it has to have an octet. Did you ever wonder that? Why does oxygen exist as O2, not just O? Has to be a dimer so it can satisfy the octet rule. Pretty neat, huh? And nitrogen. We already talked about nitrogen, so we're going to go through it a little fast. There's one nitrogen. There's the other one. So these electrons are all going to mingle to give you this. And then, ting, ting, ting. Remember, the tri triple bond counts for six, right? Lone pair for two. Four, six, eight. Triple bond counts for six electrons. Triple bond counts for six, okay? Two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. Each nitrogen has an octet. So there's the lone pair. Plus the triple bond, eight. Lone pair, plus the triple bond, eight. And nitrogen exists as N2. And that's how nitrogen um, 
exists in our in our atmosphere actually is we're breathing it right now or hopefully you're breathing it if you're not you shouldn't be watching this video because you know you're dead okay formulas of covalent bonds the molecular formula for a covalent bond identifies all the components of the molecule glucose for example is c6h12o6 this tells us that there are six carbons 12 hydrogens and six oxygens unlike the ionic formula the ionic formula tells you the ratio of cations to anions the molecular for formula tells you exactly how many atoms there are in the molecule the, the ionic formula just tells you the ratio okay so keep that in mind now we're going to name covalent uh, molecules now most of you already know how to do this you just don't believe that you know so here's how you can think about it if I wrote that down, all of you would say carbon dioxide, right? Everyone in this room or everyone out there in the internet world knows that, carbon dioxide. And then it's little brother, oops, CO, carbon monoxide. Okay, that's his little brother, carbon monoxide. So now, uh, sorry guys, I adjust myself in the chair here. So now, notice the first atom is named first. Now you don't say monocarbon, you just said carbon, right? So if there's only one of the first atom in the formula, you just say carbon. Okay, if there's only one, just say carbon. Now the second one, if there's one, you still have to give it a prefix to identify it. Notice, it's carbon monoxide, okay? The second element is named second, and it has to have a prefix no matter what. If it's one, you call it mono. If it's two, you call it di. If it's three, you call it tri. Four would be tetra. Five is penta. Six, hexa. Seven, hepta. Eight, octa. Nine is nana. And 10 is DECA. That's going to be on the next slide, okay? Our next couple of slides. Okay? So, first atom is named first. If there's only one, it doesn't get a prefix. If it's two, you've got a, two or more, you have to give it a prefix. Carbon dioxide. O, oxide. Now, remember, just like in ionics, you have to change the name of the second element. So, it's carbon dioxide not carbon dioxygen so you change the oxygen to oxide just like you would for ionics okay first atom doesn't change its name second atom does change its name carbon oxide okay carbon di meaning two oxide here carbon monoxide carbon one carbon monoxide mono meaning one oxide okay this is how you do it one carbon, if it's the first atom, don't give it the number, don't give it a mono. If it was two, you'd say die. Okay? So for example, if I had N2O4 di nitrogen. Tetra tetroxide. Okay? Di nitrogen tetroxide. I had to give the first element the, the di because there was more than one, okay? All right, here is your list of abbreviations, or, sorry, prefixes. Mono, di, tri, hepta, all that kind of stuff, okay? Just, if you don't already know them, just kind of memorize them. Let's name these together. SO3, well, the first atom is one, so we're not gonna give it a prefix. We're just gonna say sulfur. And there's three of these now. Remember, the second element becomes the ide. So it's an oxide. Trioxide. You have to say IDE for the second one. Silicon. Silicon. Tetra. Bromide. Again, the second element always has the IDE. Notice, there's only one silicon, so we did not say mono. We did not say mono. Okay. 
There's two chlorine here, however, so we have to say di, di chlorine. Hept oxide. Okay, dichlorine hept oxide. Dichlorine hexa. And that should have been all one word. Let me go back here and make that a little better. Di heptoxide. All right, that's kind of how it works, guys. That's how it's done. All right, you guys pause the video. You take over. You try. Two of them we've already done. Pause the video. Come on back. And uh, once you're done. Welcome back. Well, this one is carbon dioxide. Carbon mon oxide. Carbon tetra. Oops. Chloride and sulfur dioxide. Now, if you didn't get those right, go back and review the uh, entire section on naming uh, molecular compounds. I'm convinced that most of you, if not all of you, got all these right. It is fairly simple once you get the hang of it. All right, and we'll pause here, and uh, we'll come back and we'll pick it up in 3.5. But for now, I want to wish you good luck and good chemistry.